How do you design one of the most advanced DRs in the country? At Parkview, we did it by focusing all our attention on you, the patient, by involving doctors and nurses in the design process, by creating quieter, more private spaces, and by leading the region in heart, stroke, and trauma care. This is not your typical emergency room, it's Parkview. In an emergency, isn't this where you'd rather be? Parkview, your partner in health. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Wayne High School as we get set for another matchup in the SAC Holiday Tournament. This is the third girls game of the day with the first game, Wayne being defeated by Northrop. Southside did defeat Northside 82-34. This is our third girls matchup of the day. I am Tim Atkinson, this is SummitCitySports.com. Carrington Thompson on the camera. We're gonna call these next two games for you here this evening. This is a rematch from a game played on the 14th of November. That was at Snyder High School with Snyder winning by six, 76-70. So a little chip on the shoulder here for the Lady Saints as they get set to take on the Brew to take on the Panthers of Snyder. Snyder head coached by Kelly Micklejohn in her fourth year, 55 and 27. Bishop Doinger coached by Cleveland Inge in his third year is 21 and 31. We're gonna send it down to the PA announcer for the starting lineups. We'll join you right after that. Snyder Panthers, senior, 5'2", number two, Carlissa 
Welcome back, SummitCitySports.com, brought to you by Parkview Hospital. Getting ready to get set for this matchup between 4A Snyder Panthers and the 3A Bishop Dwenger Saints. Dwenger comes in 8-3 overall, 3-2 in this SAC. Snyder comes in 6-6 six six overall, 4-1 in conference play. Started extremely slow. Now back in the flow as we get ready to get set. Tip off here at Wayne. And we're gonna go to Andrews with Dwanger. Jada Smith, crossover, goes to the paint, kicks it out to the wing. That's Ream, and that one's picked off. And just dribbled out of bounds that time by number five, Peyton Shamble. Ream to inbound. Jada Smith, she's just a freshman, averaging seven points, 2.8 rebounds, 2.8 assists, and two and a half steals a contest. That's as a freshman through these first 11 games of this 2015-16 season. Down low is Kolkman. Andrew, she's gonna take it into the defense and will get a foul. Foul's gonna be on number 30 in black. Check that, that's not 30. There's no 30 on the floor. As Andrews gets the easy bucket. That's the first points of the game, 2-0. Jamble, and that's picked off by Reem, and then it's gonna be a foul call to number 12. Naisha Hart. Davis, her first. Excuse me, that was number five. Peyton Chamble, and 22, Delisha Davis on the foul. That's her first, team's first. That's another freshman on the court for these two teams. That goes off Andrew's knee on the bounce pass. Turnover for Dwanger, that's their first of the game. Two nothing, Dwanger on top of Snyder. Winner will move on. They will get to face the winner of tomorrow's 12-30 matchup between the number one ranked Homestead and number nine Northrop Bruins who did defeat Wayne 69-58 earlier today. Shamble loses control, Ream picks it up, kicks it up to Andrews. Andrews can't finish and rebounded by Shamble. She's gonna look, take it over the timeline. Gets a little screen from Alana. And that's gonna be a jump ball. That will go to Snyder on the alternating possession. Two nothing, 6.33 to go here in the first. SummitCitySports.com brought to you by Parkview Hospital for eight minute quarters here in girls varsity basketball. That's swatted by Ellen Ross. And here come the Saints. We're gonna push, nice little Euro. Can't get it to go, Andrews can't grab the board. And that's picked up by Alana. And with the easy handed lay in, can't get it to go, it was just bumped a little bit and Colkman with the rebound. Pushed up to Ream. Ream with the three ball, that's short. Rebounded, and that's gonna be a foul. Ellen Ross with the board. Put it up, she'll head to the line to shoot two. Davis. Davis, that's her second. Her second. Team third. Team at the third. Line. Shooting two free throws, number 25. And we get a, need to Ross. still get a number adjustment on the first foul for Snyder, as he called number 30, but no 30 on the floor. Ellen Ross hits the first of two. Number 25, Ellen Ross averages 10 and a half a game, almost eight and a half boards. Outstanding player. She is just a sophomore, ladies and gentlemen. That thrown away by Snyder. We'll go right back to Dwenger. Four nothing is your score, early going, two minutes in. Smith looking to run the show for Coach Inge. About taken away, but nice low dribble. Freshman's pretty calm with the ball in her hand. That one's thrown away, though, over the head of Colkman. Alana can't pick it up. Skip pass, good catch that time by Pickens. Pickens with a little 18-foot jumper. Back rim, no good. Rebounded by herself. Pickens, nice little interior bounce pass, but couldn't be handled. That was actually knocked out by Dwanger. I think they're saying Ross knocked that out. We'll stay Snyder ball underneath the basket. 
That one's blocked by Coltman. Rebound by Ross, and here comes Andrew and the Saints. She'll go right to the bucket. Little scoop right-handed reverse. No good. Rebounded by Snyder, and they're on the break. Jamble. Blanger in that zone now. And that's thrown, oh, thrown away. Another turnover for Snyder. That's what's been killing them here in the early going through the first three minutes. As Coach Inge is going to get a timeout called. Just a 30-second timeout. That's their first call. So three team fouls on Snyder. None called so far on the Saints. As I mentioned, this is a rematch of the matchup on November the 14th. Snyder won at home over Dwenger, 76-70. It's a huge win for Coach Micklejohn and the Lady Panthers. SummitCitySports.com brought to you by Parkview Hospital. Carrington Thompson on the camera. This is Tim Atkinson calling your play-by-play. -play. We will be covering the entire S SAC Holiday Tournament. Myself, Jeff Mahoney, be covering and calling your games today and tomorrow. ESPN will take over with our filmer for the semifinals and finals. I have Carrington Thompson shooting those games as well. So we look forward to the coverage. We continue to give you in high school varsity athletics. So turnover there on Dwanger out of the timeout. It's number 24, Natalie Mowry. Averaging three and a half again. The junior just checked in. A little one, two, one, two zone, one, two, one, one zone on the press. Blocked again by Colkman. That's her second block. Here comes Smith. Smith cross over the left hand, spin move. Got it up, but that was held on to almost a jump ball. Outlet to Alana. Little hesitation. Off glass. Can't get it to go. Colkman with another rebound. Up to Ross. Dwenger has numbers. Ross kicks it out. Mowry. Mowry's looking for help. Picks up the dribble. Looking for help in Smith. Needs help. Almost a five second call. That's going to go off Snyder. We'll stay with Dwenger here. 4 10 remaining in the first quarter. 4 0. The Saints up. Coach Inge is going to help out the referees there. Give him a nice bounce pass. Andrews looks to inbound. She does the Smith. Man-to-man -man defense by Snyder. Smith asks for a screen for Ross. They switch that screen. They're going to get an offensive call. A little arm out. A little chicken wing out on Smith. She's called for it. The freshman, that's her first foul. The team's first. The foul was the number 11, Jada Smith. Her first. First. Here comes Snyder, still looking for their first points of the contest, down 4 nothing. We've played half this first quarter. Bounce pass, and that's kicked by Andrews. We'll stay here with Snyder. And here's Shamble, calling it out. 1-2-2 two, two zone, that's picked off by Andrews. Nice little dribble low, and will finish at the bucket. Taya Andrews averages 22 and a half a game. Now has six. He's at half court, three quarter court trap. And the defense got around Colkman that time. That was number four, Kaylin Pickens. Averages two and a half a game, she's gonna Pick up a foul on Dwanger and Colkman. That's their team second. Snyder needs to get set here. Still with that 1 2 2 zone. Almost picked off by Ross. Dangerous pass. There's the good look on the zone. Good hesitation. And they're going to get a travel call to number 44, Kyla Covington. Another turnover for Snyder. Snyder looks to pick up full court here. And they're just going to man to man. See if a trap comes. It does not. Smith. 
Good looking freshman is Smith. Nice pass to Corkman. Corkman lost her footing, fell down. Incidental contact. Alana comes out with it. And with the left hand, no good, but does get fouled. She'll shoot two. That foul was on number 24, Natalie Mowry. Natalie Mowry with the foul. At the line, shooting two free throws. Number three, Alana Hurst. Hurst to the line. Snyder finally on the board now, 6-1. Hurst looks for her second. Consecutive free throw, it is up, and back rim no good, rebounded by Andrews. Andrews, got to be careful with that opposite hand, and they can see that grab by number 12, Caitlin Ryan. Check that, they got that on 32. Olivia, excuse me, number 32, Natika Rogers, the freshman for Snyder. There's Smith, Snyder having all kinds of trouble keeping hands off her while she's trying to attack on the dribble. Nice little jumper from the right elbow, no good. Rebounded by Corkman, put back up, no good. But she will head to the line to shoot two. Foul is on Barnes. Her first, team's fifth. At the line, shooting two, number 20, Josie Corkman. Corkman misses the first of two. Second attempt coming. We are at Wayne High School for the SAC Holiday Tournament. SummitCitySports.com brought to you by Parkview Hospital. Of course, giving you this coverage. Good drop pass to Hurst. Hurst with the little jumper. Nice shot off the baseline. Alana Hurst with her third point. 7-3 now. Snyder. Crossover about picked off by Chamble. Smith got it back. Looked like she got all ball there. Maybe a little pressure. Shamble does get called with the foul. That is her first. Team six on Snyder, so one away from the one and one already. Here with just two minutes to go in the first quarter. Wanger sitting in good position foul wise. Little jumper, rims out. Nice rebound by Ross. Green, Smith, three ball. No good, too long. Picked up nicely by Dwanger. Loose ball picked up by Andrews. No foul call. Rebounded by number 31, Barnes. And Dwanger will get hit with the foul out of frustration. Andrews. I'll tell you, Andrews wanted the foul. Wanted the bucket, you could tell, and out of frustration. Picks up her first. Jamble now. 1 2 2. Three quarter court press again. So a little trap with Ream at the top. Andrews swiped at it. No, good skip pass. Three ball for Snyder. Rebounded by Dwayne. That was a three ball in the corner, set up nicely to Barnes, just couldn't knock it down. She did his average six a game. Here's Smith. One man press break, finds Ross. Ross, good look that time. Beautifully done to number 32, Olivia Sturba. Server with her first bucket. Shamble goes right by Ream at the top of that press. Trap comes, there's Barnes. Barnes gonna kick to the top of key. Hurst, right elbow, no good. Rebounded by Ross, she's all over the glass. Throws it up to number 12, Ryan. Caitlin Ryan, double teamed. Finds Ream in the corner. Skip pass to Smith. Smith, the freshman, another three. That one's long again. Nice little 18 foot baseline jumper, too long. And they're gonna get a foul called on Ross, I believe. Yep, Ellen Ross is gonna get hit, the sophomore. Plenty of youth out here for Dwanger mixed with the outstanding senior, number 22, Taya Andrews, averages 22 and a half a game, six and a half boards, one and a half assists and two steals. She's committed to play for her uncle, Gary Andrews, at Roberts Wesleyan out there out east. She is committed. 
As that ball is dropped in just from about 18, that was Barnes. That's a nice looking stroke, does Barnes. Hits that one. Barnes comes up to loose ball. Had Hurst out long. Hurst has a knack for breaking out off the rebounds for easy buckets. Just hasn't been able to finish any of her three free throws. Good look that time to the sub that just checked in. Claudia Ream, the sophomore. Long pass, and that's going to be a travel. Tough play there for Snyder. Both girls went up for it. Hit each other. And Unfortunately, number 32, Rogers, Antica Rogers, a freshman, just hit the court. 2.3 seconds, Dwenger up by six. Good pass up to Ross, and no foul. We're gonna call foul call, and then that will be in the bonus. That's on Hurst, one and one now. Foul on Alana Hurst, that's her first. So Ross will head to the line for a one and one with point seven seconds remaining in the quarter. Ross knocks down the first. Three for three from the line is Ross. Four point, three points total here in the early going. Ross tees up the second, knocks that one down. Point seven seconds is all Snyder has. They try to roll it and just not enough time for Snyder to get it off. It's a great quarter by Bishop Dwanger. They go up 13 to five to end that first quarter. 13-5 it is, Dwanger trying to make a statement at, after losing against Snyder at their home gym, at Snyder's home gym on November the 14th. Lost by six, so they're looking for payback here along with the right to move on in this tournament where they will get to play the winner of the number one ranked team in the state, the Homestead Spartans, as they play Northrop at 12.30 tomorrow. The 9 a.m. game is, of course, Lures and Concordia girls. 10.45 game tomorrow. Boys will be Northside and Concordia. Second boys game of the day at 4 p.m. Carroll and Southside. Southside beat Dwanger today 66-64. Dwanger had an opportunity to tie it at the buzzer, but did not go, and Southside pulled that out by two. Period two, Dwanger basketball. Let's get set for the second quarter. This is SummitCitySports.com, brought to you by Parkview Hospital. Carrington Thompson on the camera and Tim Atkinson bringing your play-by-play -play here this evening. Andrews with the bucket. Her first bucket of the second quarter. Now has six. Big board there by number 32, Olivia Sturba. Good skip pass to Andrews. Fake jumper finds Ream, who looked out top to Ream. Picked off by Shamble, left-handed layup. Can't get it to go. Good put back, but can't get that runner to go. And Ream with the nice hands and takes it away. Strong board there by the senior. Madison Ream, they skip it to Andrews. She pulls up from 17, no good. Rebounded once again by number 32, Olivia Sturba. But she just traveled, a little shuffle of the feet. So that'll be a turnover on Dwanger. 7.20 to go in the second quarter, 15-5. Dwinger on top by 10. This is that biggest lead. Good press break that time by Snyder. Coach Inge and his Lady Saints settle into that kind of 1 2 2 matchup. Barnes, little pump fake and jumper. Nice looking shot by number 31, the sophomore, Hannah Barnes. Her fifth point, excuse me, her fifth po fourth point. About thrown away, Ross got to it. Ream, baseline, no good, that one was long. Shamble does pick that up. Works around the screen from the referee and her teammate. Pulls it up to Perkins. Pickens, excuse me, and put up and in by Barnes. That's her six point now. That's the team high for Snyder. As they're face guarding Taya Andrews. 
Number 32 is and Nautica Rogers. Ream in the baseline. Shots been off today. Good pass to Ross. Ross finishes through the contact nicely. That's her six point, 17-9. Dwinger on top, six minutes to go here in the second quarter. Skip pass over Pickens head. Good look by Barnes just over the head as that skip pass works outstandingly in the girls game here in high school. But that will be a turnover on Snyder. We'll go back Dwinger's way. Jada Smith. Easy dribble drive. And they're going to get a blocking foul called on number five, Chamble. That's going to be her second. That's the team's eighth. So Smith will head to the line to shoot a bonus, one in bonus. First one goes down for Jada Smith. That's her first bucket. Has been extremely important in this nine point advantage. Through about 11 minutes here to start the game. She's running the show nicely, breaking the press easily as she hits both free throws. Coach Mikkeljohn for Snyder is going to go ahead and get a timeout called down by 10. Wenger matches their biggest lead of 10. SummitCitySports.com brought to you by Parkview Hospital. Let's give you the girls tourney update here. Mentioned it a couple times throughout it as I know people tune in and out watching our, our game on our YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe to that for our full game video and highlight clips. Northrop did beat Wayne, excuse me, Northrop did beat Wayne at the 9 a.m. game, 69-58. Other girls matchup today was Southside against Northside. Southside beat the, the Northside Redskins 82-34 to move on to face the number two seeded team, Carroll. Southside is seeded number seven. Northrop beat Wayne. Northrop the ninth seed, Wayne the eighth seed. So upset there if you consider that an upset. But Northrop will get to play Homestead on Tuesday. If you haven't seen Homestead and Carissa McLaughlin and company, I highly suggest you checking the Homestead Lady Spartans game out. You'll be impressed. Back to the action after the Snyder timeout. Here's Chamble. Finds Barnes as they try to break the press. More of a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press as they trap. Down low, Covington, no foul called on Corkman, turned over by Dwanger. That will come back to Snyder. A tough no call there on the put up there by Covington, but she didn't pout. Still going to work, Pickens. That's Barnes off the screen. She was wide open on the baseline. She knew it, wanted the wide open three. Skip pass to Pickens, and that's gonna be thrown out of her head again. Pickens either needs to let her teammates know that she's going to pinch on the weak side or if she's going to stay out to that three-point three point line, she can't be indecisive on that. That skip pass is open for sure for the Lady Spartans. Smith threw up a floater, no good, rebounded by Barnes. Chamble looks up to Pickens. Pickens does take the hard handle and is going to get Andrews with the foul. Pickens will head to the line to shoot two free throws. Pickens to the line to shoot two. That's the second foul on Taya Andrews, the senior high leading scorer for the team on the season, 22 and a half a game. And line change here for Coach Inge as Ross, Claudia Ream, and number 24, Natalie Mowry check in. They'll stay on the court with Andrews and Corkman. The five for Snyder, Pickens, Barnes, Rogers and Covington. Goes baseline, does Andrews, kicks it out. Three ball, no good, rebounded by Covington. Led the shamble and the Snyder bench is 
Burge and their girls to push the tempo. Is up top. Here's Pickens. Shamble up top. Hesitation. Back to Pickens. More of a 2 3 zone now. Oh, that's definitely a 1 3 1. They just flash in and out. Double team quite a bit. And that ball thrown right to the chest of the referee. Out of bounds. Another turnover for Snyder. That's been the difference here this evening. Big reason why the Lady Panthers are down 19 to 10 with four and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. Claudia Ream, she looks to bring that up. Ream, little floater from nine. Nice little play by Madison Ream. As that's turned over by Snyder. That did go out of bounds off Shamble. Claudia Ream was there wreaking havoc. Forces another, another turnover on the Panthers. Saints defense in control, up 21-10, 4 10 remaining. 1 2 2 zone for Snyder that time, and Ross immediately goes to work, finds the opening on the left block, takes the basket and the foul. She'll head to the line to shoot one, and try to convert that three point play. She has eight points here in the first half through the first quarter and a half. Can't get that one to go, so the conversion no good for Ross. That's her first free throw miss. She's now four for five from the line here in the first half. Pickens, excuse me, Shamble's gonna launch a three and left open in the weak spot of the zone, and she knocks down a three to pull within 10. Andrews, little hesitation dribble and floater, no good. Rebound by Reem, but can't save it from going out of bounds. Snyder looks to inbounds. Alicia Davis, eight and a half points a game. She's a freshman for Snyder. Covington, wide open, takes it in. Is going to get a foul called on Corkman, a block. Looks like she may have taken an elbow from Covington in the face. Well, that's Corkman's second. Team seventh. So Snyder in the bonus now. Covington does hit the first. That's her first point of the game. She's had a good game, just has not been able to get anything to go. Been battling though down low. And she does drain the second. Nice looking touch by Kyla Covington. Just a junior. Madison Marine to Claudia Reem. Reem splits the defense, does regain control. Bounce pass to Ross. Ross takes the baseline, fights her way back up on the same side of the glass over Barnes. Ellen Ross having an outstanding game. Loose ball picked up by Chamble. She throws it up, is gonna get a foul called. Who are they gonna get it on? They're gonna get it on Ellen Ross. That's her second, it is. That's the team's eighth foul. First one, front rims, rattles out. Bad luck that time. For Chamble, has three points on the game. With her squad down 25-15. Second one up, and that one spins home. Chamble with four points now. Claudia Reem pushes it and threw it out of bounds. Just got too far in the paint, lost track of where players were and immediately knew it. So turnover for Dwanger. They've definitely taken care of the ball though in this first half. And that one's almost turned over by Davis. Got it back. Alicia Davis, good pass to Barnes who cut without the ball to the baseline. Covington with the outstanding board put back up and foul called on Corkman. Josie Colkman averages six points a game, five boards. That's her third team, that's her third foul, team's ninth. 256 remaining, that first one back rims by Covington. Now two for three from the line. Rose Tipman checks in for the Saints. She's a senior for the foul troubled Colkman. 
Covington. Second attempt. That one, nothing but net. So three points for Covington, three for four from that line. Green rubs off a screen from Tittman, and Tittman was open on the roll, just couldn't see her, tried to find Andrews down low, and that was knocked out by Davis for Snyder. We'll stay with Dwenger ball. 2.45 to go. Here in the second quarter, Dwenger has been in control as that one's nearly turned over but knocked out by Davis. Again, just reminding, no shot clock in the state of Indiana. Madison Ream inbounds. Look for Rose Tipman, but that's kicked out. We'll still stay with Dwenger. They stack them all at the free throw line, does Coach Inge. They run Tipman right at it. Second one, nicely done to Sturba, and she's going to pick up a foul. Great looking play by Coach Inge on the out of bounds as they ran. Two cutters to each block. Caused some confusion on the back line of that defense for Snyder, which caused the foul. Now Sturba heads of the line, just can't hit that first one of two. She has two points here with the first half. Smith checks back in for Dwenger. She's been running the point nicely for Coach Inge and the Lady Saints here this evening. That one rebounded by Snyder. They look to go. Delisha Davis crossover nicely into the paint. Good luck and left-handed lay-in by number 32, Nautique Rogers. That was set up nicely by Delisha Davis. Averages three assists a game. Andrews crossover baseline and good defense. And that's going to be last touch by Snyder. Covington, nice looking defensive play. Just got her hands up there in the passing lane. Coach Inge going to set up something different here on the out of bounds underneath the basket. As Ross looks to check back in, she's going to check in for Rose Tittman. Tittman takes a seat. Andrews looks to inbound, does the Sturba. And taken away by Snyder. And then Jada Smith's going to get caught with the foul. Tough break there for Dwanger. And great play by Peyton Jamble. Tenth team foul on Dwanger. So Snyder will head to the line to shoot the double bonus. First one up and knocked down. Jamble, two for three from the line. Five points. That's the team high for the Lady Panthers. 2.13 remaining. Second one up and good as well. So she knocks down both. Andrews, nice hesitation dribble, and that's going to be a foul. A little hand check, hold foul called on number 32, Nautique Rogers. The freshman gets picked up her second. Taya Andrews will head to the line now to shoot the double bonus as that's the 10th team foul. Taya Andrews, as I mentioned, committed to play for her uncle Gary Andrews at Roberts Wesleyan. 26-21, Saints on top. Snyder's done an outstanding job cutting into this 10 point lead. Has cut it to five and half, back to six. So Andrews hits that one. And that one's stolen, almost picked up by Covington. Good look to Rogers, and Rogers with the left hand. Ross is going to get hit with the foul. Ellen Ross, that's going to be her third. So both bigs for Coach Inge with three team foul, with three personal fouls. Josie Kolkman averages six points and five boards, and Ellen Ross averaging ten and a half points and eight boards a game. They're both there, bigs with three personal fouls as Rose Tipp Tipman's going to check back in for Ellen Ross, and she'll take a seat. 27-22, second attempt coming. 
Can't get it to go by Rodgers. Rebounded by the Saints, and here comes Andrews, just under two minutes. Andrews likes that little hesitation dribble. Back to Jada Smith. Smith. Wants to post up Andrews. Andrews ends up flaring out to the sideline. Goes baseline. Sturba switches out nicely. Wide open. Was number 24, Natalie Mowry. Chose not to take it. Instead, goes to the bucket. It's going to get a foul. Nice take to the cup by number 24, Natalie Mowry, the junior. Foul's going to go on Delicia Davis. That's her third. Well, the second leading scorer per game this season for the Lady Panthers, Delicia Davis, now has three fouls. Is that one? It's missed by Maori. She'll hit now have her second attempt. 27-22, going her on top. Minute and a half to go in this second quarter. That one does rattle home for Maori. One point now for her. Good defense by Smith. They did find Covington. That's a good call on the travel. Just started to go before she had the quick control of the basketball. Turnover for Snyder. Down by six, minute 20. Here in the second. They inbound to Smith. She's a one-person break, press break down there. And she goes crossover. Coach Inge calls a play. Smith picks up her dribble at the top of the key. They're looking for Andrews. Good look. Tittman from the charity stripe knocks it down. Nice play. Rose Tittman flashed to the free throw line and hit that 15-foot jumper wide open. And that's going to be a turnover on the inbounds pass by Snyder. 56 seconds. This five-point deficit slowly Going back to that 10 is Andrews for the 18-foot jumper. No good. Rebounded by Covington. Snyder picks it up to Pickens. Pickens with the easy lay-in for two. Pickens with her first bucket, 40 seconds to go. Dwanger up by six. Smith crosses over on Covington. That's just not fair as Covington just can't stay with the point guard. Smith, she crossed up and went right to her left hand as she likes to do. And they're actually going to get that on Hurst. Smith to the line. Does knock that one down. Jada Smith now three for three from the line. Three points. Going her back up seven. Smith front rims and does get the shooter's roll to go. Four points now for the talented freshman point guard for Coach in Jada Smith. Campbell Snyder wants the last shot, I believe, as they're setting up the trap. She picked up the ball. Pickens does get to it. Back to Shamble. Shamble. Launches it. Back rim, no good. Smith tried to knock it out to herself. Picked up by Covington. He's going to get a foul called on Sturba on the putback. Covington will head to the line now to shoot two. She's three for four from the line. That's three points. First one up and rattles home for Kayla, excuse me, Kyla Covington. Four points, four for five from the line. Second attempt of two. 13.2 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Seven point lead for Dwanger. Make it six. Covington hits both, now has five points. Andrews gets it into Smith. Smith with 10 seconds. Eight seconds. Andrews does get the pill, but knocked out of bounds by Rogers. Dwinger will have to look the inbound again, up by six, 5.4 to go here in the second. They inbound. Smith, look from the screen, little floater at the free throw line, can't get it to go, put back try. By number 24, Natalie Mowry can't get that to go, and that's where we'll end halftime with your score. Bishop Dwanger up 32-26. Snyder did an outstanding job in that second quarter, pulling and cutting that lead. 
But we will take a break here. SummitCitySports.com brought to you by Parkview Hospital. We'll join you for the second half. Welcome back. SummitCitySports.com brought to you by Parkview Hospital. Tim Atkinson calling your play-by-play -play this evening. Getting ready to get started with this second half. Third girls game of this SAC holiday tournament. Played at Wayne High School. Halftime score, the Bishop Dwinger Lady Saints up 32. 26 over the Snyder Lady, Snyder Lady Panthers. Dwanger's biggest lead was 10 at one time. They're early in the second quarter. Snyder did a great job of battling back and cutting it to within six. I mentioned this is a rematch of the game played on November the 14th at Snyder High School. The Dwinger did get beat 76-70 there at Snyder. As they are 3-2 in conference play are the Lady Saints, the Panthers 4-1 in conference play. Dwinger comes out in that zone with Ream at the top of it. Good look to Covington. Covington with the drop step to oh, look to the right hand over the left shoulder. Way to start the quarter there by Covington and Snyder is a turnover by the Saints. Hurst takes it right handed layup, just can't get it to go. She just hasn't been able to spin those layups in on the right side. As Coach Mickeljohn clapping on the youngster to not as she averages just nearly four points a game. The junior, about three assists a game as well. Alana Hurst. Jada Smith looks for Cor Colkman to Ream. Ream with a nice little baseline floater from about six. Nice play that time by Madison Ream. Going her up by four, picked off that time by Jada Smith. Smith pushes it up to Andrews and just a little too much top spin on the ball. Didn't hop up like Taya Andrews was expecting. Turnover by the Saints. That's their second turnover here within the first minute of this third quarter. Davis, she has three fouls. Turned over. Andrews takes it up and lays it in. So a steal and bucket. Andrews now has 10. She had eight at the half. She was the team high and game high. Team high for Snyder was the point guard. Peyton Chamble had six points. Is that rebound and foul? Foul's going to be called on Covington. Just her first. Teams first. Both teams did get into the double bonus in the first half. Smith, it's a screen from Colkman. Out to Ream. Ream, and they're gonna get a foul called. Nope, they're gonna say that Hurst had a piece of the ball and stepped out of bounds while she had touch of the ball. Out of bounds to Dwanger. Madison Ream. Inbound. That was a tough pass and catch by Ross, but Ross gets it, puts it right back up for another bucket. She now has 12. Averages 10 and a half a game. Is that trap and almost turned over. Here's Hurst with the jumper from eight. No good. Rebounded by Covington. Was fending off Smith. Jada Smith tried to go up over the top of Covington, but will get hit with the foul. That is her third, team's first of the half. That one almost turned over by Snyder. Regained by Shamble, now is. Ream just couldn't grasp it, tried to push it up to Andrews, but didn't have control of it to get enough muster to put it up top. There back comes Shamble and Snyder. In the corners, Davis for three. 
No good. Rebounded by Covington. She's been outstanding down low. That's her ninth point, Covington. Ball come in. That's going to go off of Smith. Just too lazy with that inbounds pass. This coach Inge is going to get a timeout call here on the floor. Several turnovers, at least three here early going within the first three minutes. Of this third quarter. This one you need, these first half of that third quarter, so important for momentum's sake and getting your team going. As Dwyer just has not been able to control the basketball. Coach Hinge going over some instructions, not happy with his team, saying we're not gonna let go of this 10 point lead, are we? As the Saints come out of their timeout, Coach Mickeljohn is still going over with the whiteboard. Has not been warned yet, so she's good to go. 38-30, Boyer on top. Here in the first round of the Holiday Tournament, SAC Holiday Tournament. I guess you would consider this, it is the second round. As four teams played earlier today, Wayne and Northrop. Northrop winning 68-58. They'll play Homestead tomorrow. Dwanger and Snyder right here. Southside beat Northside 82-34. They'll play Carroll tomorrow. And then Lures and Concordia play first game tomorrow, 9 a.m. Three ball no good by Snyder. Rebounded by Davis. Good look to Rogers. Rogers with the right-handed jump hook. No good. Covington with another board. And foul, that might be on Smith. If it is, that's four. It is, Jada Smith, her fourth. The foul's number 11. Jada Smith. Team second, Covington, outstanding. Start to the third quarter. Had five going into half. Now has 11 with a chance to give herself 12. Covington up and front rim, no good. Rebounded by Sturba. Gets it to Ream. Ream, big pass. Not a good look that time to number 12, Caitlin Ryan. Just trying to make a play was Ream, understandably so. Davis, look for Covington. Covington at the left elbow, and they're going to get a three second up, uh, traveling call, change of pivot foot. That's what the outside referee is saying. So turnover on Snyder, 38-32. Dwenger up by six. They've had a lead of 10 at one point. Claudia Ream with the floater, no good. Rebounded by Hurst. Hurst got that pivot foot down. Chamble is going to let the defense go. Trap comes. D D Davis open. Rogers and thrown away. Picked off by Ream. Ream leaves it for Claudia Ream with the right-handed lay-in. Claudio Ream takes it from Madison Ream. Up and good. Hurst takes it out to Davis. Skip pass and shamble. Dwinger stays in that 1-3-1 zone. Hurst, good hands by Ream. Has two steals on the night. Davis for three, no good. Rebounded once again by Covington, that time blocked by Colkman. And we're going to have a jump ball, alternating possession. We're going to go to Snyder. Oh, good rebound there. Colkman battling with Covington to tie it up, to force the jump ball. Claudia Reams going to run right into the defender. Alana Hurst, and she'll get a foul called on her. That's Hurst's second. Check it, her third, team second. And does come up with a steal, does Hurst, finds Davis, and they're off and running. Davis has Barnes, goes to Chamble with the left hand. Nice looking lay in by the junior. That's her eighth point. Kick up. And lost control of the ball. Loose ball now. Cut picked up by Covington. Outlet to Hurst. Hurst 
Well, Florida, that's blocked by Ross, but a foul called on the block is what the referee motioned to. That's her fourth, Ellen Ross. Second leading scorer on the team, averages 10 and a half a game behind Andrews, 22 and a half. First one up and good for Hurst. She now has four. Ryan will sit down along with Ross. Second one up for Hurst, no good. Rebounded by Sturba, nope, tracked down and saved by Shamble, but had a foot on the line. Out of bounds to Dwenger. Rogers checks back in for Snyder, along with number 33, Winnie O'Brien, her first action up tonight. She's a sophomore. And Jada Smith is held with four fouls, along with Ellen Ross, so two important pieces and starters for Coach Inge in foul trouble with 3-15 still to go in the third, and a turnover. Covington picks it back up on the loose ball. Barnes, you can't leave her open for three. Front rim, no good. Hustle to get her own board, put it right back up, no good. Flipped out by Sturba, because Covington had it. There's Shamble and Snyder, 255, down by five points, 40-35. to 35. Been down all game, looking to make this comeback. No good, just can't hit the three ball, can Snyder. Here tonight as Andrews comes out with it. Kicks it out to the sub. Winnie O'Brien, look for Colkman and pushed down by Covington. He's gonna get hit with the foul. Kyla Covington, that's her second. Team third. Smith comes back in with four fouls. So Coach Inge making a calculated risk here. She is just a freshman. That's a lot of confidence in the youngster. Trap came, but Smith went through it, found Sturba, but that's picked off by Davis. Davis goes, but is fouled by Winnie O'Brien, the sophomore. Fourth team foul on Dwenger. O'Brien's first. Snyder looks to inbound, cutting this five point deficit. This is the closest they've got since the first quarter. Three ball coming for Barnes. She's the only one that's been close and has a nice stroke, but just not able to knock him down. Hurst from the right elbow, left, no good. Picks out here, rebounded by Dwanger, left to Jada Smith. Just under two minutes to go here in the third. Smith, it's a switch, finds Colkman. Colkman kicks it back out, back down to Colkman. Good two-man game, right-handed jump hook, no good. Fell right to O'Brien, new pump fake and put up and just can't get it to go. Rebounded by Sturba. She dribbles out but threw it low to Smith. Kick out. Didn't see it, did the Snyder defense. Colquhoun's gonna put it up, he's gonna get a foul called on Hurst. That's Hurst's fourth. Colquhoun's gonna go to the line to shoot two. She averages six a game. Colquhoun can't hit the first. Second one coming for the junior. Josie Colquhoun averages six points a game. Those five boards have been ever important. That one back rim's no good, misses both free throws, but tracked down by number 12, Caitlin Ryan, and Dwyer will get another possession. Minute 26, they find Colquhoun on the baseline. She tries to save it, does the Sturba. Good kick out to number 24, who's wide open. Going to pull up from 15 and just drain it. Natalie Mowry with the bucket. Delay a game on Dwanger for grabbing the balls that came down through the hoop. Next one will be a tactical, but they go back up by seven. Minute 13 remaining here in the third. 
Barnes takes it in the butt basket, right-handed floater, no good. Coughlin and Rogers go after it, and that's gonna be a jump ball. And that's gonna stay with Snyder on the tie-up alternating possession. Minute 03, 42-35, going on top, then in control. Sends the tip. That's Barnes. Barnes got double team, so it's gotta be open. She travel. And Coach Mickeljohn says immediately, no, she did not travel. Not happy with the call. Turnover on Snyder, just under a mini. Minute to play here in the third. Turnover's killing the Panthers here tonight in their opening game of this SAC Holiday Tournament. Look down low to Kalkman, but Covington with the steal finds Davis. Davis weaving through defenders, gets the foul and can't finish, but she'll head to the line to shoot two. That's the fifth team foul on Dwenger. They get that on Sturba, Olivia Sturba. Alicia Davis hits the first of two. That's her first point. Men in foul trouble the first half. Limited minutes for the freshman. Averaging eight and a half as Coach Mickeljohn has tons of young talent on her squad. As Davis hits both, cuts it back to within five. They inbound it to Mowry. Mowry's gonna take it across the timeline, tried to split the defense and that's turned over. Chamble picks it up, finds Davis. Davis, good look to Covington. Covington, and they're gonna get a foul called on Colkman. On the push on Colkman. That's four now on Colkman. That's the third star starter with four personal fouls. That shamble is wide open. They find Rogers even closer to the bucket. She just can't finish. Rebounded by Covington. Put back up, no good. Rebounded by Barnes. Put back up and good. Anna Barnes. She now has eight. Huge put back. They cut the lead to three. 15 seconds to go in the third. Three ball. No good, rebounded by Snyder. They can tie it or cut it within one, eight seconds. Davis is gonna take it all the way in and can't get it to go. Rebounded by Rogers and she gets fouled. So with 3.4 to go here in the third quarter, Snyder down by three. That foul was on number 24, Natalie Mowry. Natalie Mowry picks up the foul on the push. Davis push it, couldn't get the layup to go. Rebounded by Nautique Rogers. And Nautic Rogers averages seven a game. And can't hit that one. That's three total. She's one for three from the line. Second free throw coming here for Rogers. Nautica Rogers. No good, and Snyder, Rogers does track it down and just didn't put it up. It's the lack of time control there. Or clock awareness, excuse me, for Snyder as that's the way the third quarter will end. Snyder should be pleased and Coach Mickeljohn down only by three now has cut that lead. Was a 10 point advantage. And Snyder just has not been able to cut it to within that five. But the big story is the foul trouble for Dwanger. Jada Smith with four, their freshman starting point guard. Josie Colkman, their starting center, the junior has four. And Ellen Ross, their starting power forward, also has four. This is SummitCitySports.com brought to you by Parkview Hospital. One more game yet to come this evening. Boys match up. It's a rematch from last Friday. The Homestead Spartans will take on Bishop Lures. Sidney Curry for the Lures, the outstanding freshman, top 100 player in the country in his class. Is supposed to be playing tonight, did not play in the Friday game at Homestead, where they found themselves up by 12 at half. 
and then found themselves losing by 12 at the end of that contest. Dwenger starts with the ball. Here's Ream. Look to Kalkman. Rogers got a piece of it, knocked it out of bounds. Dwenger just a little careless with the ball here over the past several minutes. Almost turned over another one. Madison Ream looks to inbound. She does the Ross, who finds Jada Smith. All three with four personals in the game now for Coach Inge. Kolkman, great steal by Covington. Didn't see Covington, she came out of nowhere with the steal. Almost stolen back by Ryan. Up top now to Chamble. Barnes looks for Covington at the free throw line. Out for Chamble to tie. That's good! Chamble with her fifth point of the second half, now has 11. We're tied up, 42 all. Pass and Ream in the corner. Good pass to Ross. Ross is gonna get fouled by Rogers. Ellen Ross, nice play. Pinning her defender. Great pass, led her right to the bucket as Rogers will get hit with that foul. That's her third. Ellen Ross to the line to shoot two. Four for five from the line, make it five for six from the line. Now 13 points here through three full quarters. We have seven minutes to go here in the fourth. Glinger gets a two point advantage back on the pair of free throws by Ellen Ross, who averages 10 and a half a game. There's this one, three, one. Trap, Coach Inge wasn't happy with that execution as Barnes launches a three, no good. Rebounded by Smith, the freshman looks to push. Had Ryan, but good close out by Rogers. Almost lost her footing. Finds Ross, Ross double team, somebody has to be open. Somebody still needs to be open, double team's coming. And we have a timeout called by Coach Inge just before the turnover, as that turnover was coming as Jada Smith stepped over the timeline just as he called timeout, saving the turnover. Dwinger up by two, 44-42, 30-second timeout. Called by Coach Inge and the Saints. Parkview Sports Medicine, the proud of the Athletic Department, brought to you by Parkview Park Hospital. Carrington Thompson on the camera. I am Tim Atkinson calling your play-by-play -play this evening. My first game here this evening. As we had Jeff Mahoney call the first four here at Wayne High School. Be lucky enough to call this Dwinger Snyder game and the following game, a rematch of Friday night. Homestead and Lures. With Homestead winning that contest by 12 last Friday night at home. Ross look for Kolkman, turned over again. Davis. Looks to push, puts it up, no good, and put right back up by Nautica Rogers with her fifth point. Too shy of her average. Ball comes in the paint, and they're gonna get a foul call that time by Davis, that'll be her fourth. That's the 16th foul on Snyder, 17 fouls on Dwanger. That is Davis's fourth. Ream looks to inbound, finds Ross. Ross under the basket too far though, and that's a travel. She switched pivot feet. Turnover, Dwanger. Out of bounds to Snyder. Here's Hurst, inbounds to Davis. As they trap here in the backcourt, they find Elena Hurst, little floater. Nope, she was gonna leave that to Covington. Should have just went up with the shot there. Snyder up 44, excuse me, tied up 44-44. 6.05 remaining in the contest. Snyder looks to inbound underneath their own basket. Ryan Chamble, who hands it to Davis. Davis, quick first step, lost control of the ball, loose ball on the ground, and Jada Smith hit the ground before everyone else, and that was the difference. But on the line was number 24, Natalie Mowry. Turnover for the Saints. Snyder will still retain possession. Yeah. 
Hurst kicks it out to Shamble. Not very good spacing right now for Snyder. Out, Davis, Chamble. Floater, that was a bit heavy, but they're on the board again by Tala Covington. That's the Snyder Panthers' first lead, up 46-44. Smith almost with the walk there. They come back to her. Just that's been the story of this second half. Snyder in the passing lanes. Causing turnovers and easy buckets as Nautico Rogers takes it coast to coast off the steal. Snyder now with their biggest lead of four. Ada Smith, Madison Ream. Ryan, jumper, short, excuse me, that was Mowry with the short jumper. Here's Davis, 453 remaining by. Here in the four, Snyder up by four. Been down all game into these last two possessions. Bounce pass, nice bounce pass of Rodgers. No good, but Covington went right to the board and moved Ross out of the way for the easy putback. They're gonna foul called on Snyder. That's on Covington, that's her third. That's the team's seventh. So a one and one coming. Ross now to the line with her team down by six. Barnes checks back in for Covington who's destroyed the Saints on the glass here in the second half. Ellen Ross with the one and one. Hits the first, that's a big free throw right there by Ellen Ross. And outstanding from the line. Seven for eight from the line. Ross for her second attempt, that one in front rims and rolls in, gets the shooter's roll. Another free throw, eight for nine from the line. Four and a half minutes remaining. Snyder up by four. Shamble. Davis. Winger stays in the zone, and that one's thrown away. Went off the hands of Sturba. Sturba says she never touched it. Inbound to Rogers. Rogers is going to get tripped up by Sturba. She's going to get hit with the personal. So Rogers will head to the line to shoot two. Atika Rogers to the line. One for four from the line. Here's the one and one. First one up and good. She'll get a second attempt. Two for five from the line now. Second one, up and good for Rodgers. Five point, six point advantage for Snyder now back to their biggest. Claudia Reim, Reim, run the point. Ralph Smith is out. Reim needs some help, finds it in Andrews. Gets bumped by Rodgers, now double team. Goes baseline, Taya finds an open jumper and nicely done and hit down by Caitlin Ryan. Davis goes baseline. Almost a double dribble there. Thrown out to Shamble. There's Barnes. Barnes skips it to Hurst. Hurst goes in the lane. Put it up. No good. Rebounded by Ross. Ellen Ross going to hold it up. And need help. And that's a travel. She picked up her pivot foot. Tough play. Turnover on Dwanger. Down by four, 326 remaining in the game. Three ball short by Snyder, and that'll go out of bounds to Dwanger. 321 remaining in the game. This is our second to last contest of the game here in the holiday tournament. Alternating boys and girls 
matchups here this year in the holiday tournament. They look for Ryan. Ryan, that was just too late of a look to Ross, picked off by Hurst. Campbell up to Davis, and Davis just took her eyes off it, threw it in, saved it, but to Dwanger. Here comes Taya Andrews. Has Claudia Ream up and easy lay in for Claudia Ream. They pull within two. We're under three minutes. 52-50. There's Hurst at the top of the key. Snyder looks to burn some clock. It's a screen from Covington. Can't get to it, picked off, and here comes Claudia Ream up to Taya Andrews, and will finish with the right hand for the tie. Taya Andrews with her 12 point, well under her 22 and a half a game, but she does pull her Lady Saints even 52-52. SummitCitySports.com brought to you by Parkview Hospital. Carrington Thompson on the camera. This is Tim Atkinson calling your play-by-play -play here this evening. Been a great day of action. The 9 a.m. game, the first game of the day, found Northrop girls beating the Wayne girls 69-58. Followed by the 10:45 game, which switched to the boys, where Southside. Beat Dwanger 66-64. That was fouled by the 12-30 matchup with Southside and Northside. Southside winning 82-34. Followed by the 4 p.m. game, which saw the Northrop Bruins on top of Wayne. So they move on to play Snyder the number two seeded team in the turning. Fifty-two all, 229 remaining in the game. Dwanger did have a 10 point lead at one time, had us quickly gone down and we're all knotted up now at 52. Davis is gonna be guarded by the sophomore. Up top to Hurst, down low to Covington. Covington with that right hand. And it's going to get a reach in foul on number 12, Caitlin Ryan. Team's ninth. Her first. Caitlin Ryan tried to dig down on that post. Two shots, number 44, Kyla Covington. Covington up and good. Second attempt coming for Covington. Looking for that two point lead. Good. Covington hits both her free throws. They inbound to Andrews. Andrews, as they're gonna run it off Andrews here. Smart move, she is the top player. Almost a push off. Good defense and hands as Barnes Picks it up to Hurst, Hurst with the right-handed land in. Elena Hurst with her six point. Up to Ross as they break the press. Back to Ryan, back to Ross. Ross at the elbow, finds Sturbo with a little jumper. Knocked in nicely by the sophomore. Showing a lot of guts, Olivia Sturba. Average at three and a half a game, she now has four. Pulls within two, minute 30 to go. No shot clock here in the state of Indiana. So pay attention to that five second possession, guarded possession. Davis. Barnes. Back to Shamble, they run a little weave. They throw it up to Shamble, and she's gonna get fouled. They're gonna get that on number 12, Caitlin Ryan. Her second. Team's 10th. Shamble to the line to shoot two, trying to push this two-point advantage for her Lady Panthers. 
First attempt, rattles home. The junior averaging 12 and a half a game. It's the first. Smith back in for Coach Inge and the Saints. One on one remaining. Snyder up by three, 57 54. As we have some blood, I believe, on Taya, excuse me, on uh, Jada Smith's arm. So they're going to have to bring Claudia Reed back in. Checking in, Winnie O'Brien, the sophomore four coach in, just Jada Smith has to check out to get the bandage on her arm. Can't have exposed blood. As that bucket's put up and in by Covington, or not, excuse me, by Chamble, and that's almost turned over. Loose ball, now picked up by Barnes, and get Andrews with the hold. And an intentional foul. They're gonna get an intentional foul called on Taya Andrews. Tough, tough call. That's going to be huge. Two shots and the ball coming for Snyder. Already up by four, 58, 54, 53 seconds remaining. Barnes hits the first. Mowry and Smith check back in. Second free throw coming off the intentional. Front rim no good for Barnes. One for two from the line, now has nine points. The players think it's wet on the floor. They're saying it's okay. Referees clearing it. Inbounds now. Snyder up by five. Look at a travel call on Chamble. Huge call on the baseline as she took off with the ball without putting it down. Turnover for Snyder, 51 seconds. Dwinger down by four. Excuse me, down by five. Need a bucket in the worst way here. Smith. Smith to Ross, Ross for three, no good. Track down and out of bounds, that will go to Snyder. 42 seconds, Snyder up by five. Inbound, Jamble. Hurst up to Davis, Davis found Hurst. Hurst is gonna get bumped by the traveling called first. Before the bump, just caught that in an awkward way with their back to the bucket. So another turnover on Snyder, 32 seconds. Swinger down by five. Smith to the bucket and is going to get a foul called on Covington for reaching in. That's her fourth. That'll send Jada Smith to the line to shoot two. She has four points on the night, four for four from the line. She averages seven a game. That one spins out for Smith. Second attempt coming. Down by five. Jada Smith. Free throw up, and that one's short. Rebounded by Chamble and Snyder. They got a foul, does Dwanger. Chamble throws it up to Hurst, and foul. It'll be a push call on number 24, Mowry. It's her third foul. That'll be the donut bonus. Snyder to the line. Elena Hurst. Elena Hurst to the line to shoot the double bonus. Up by five, 59-54. Snyder with a big comeback here at Wayne High School in their opening game of the SAC Holiday Tournament. 
Lana Hurst misses that first of the double bonus. Second attempt, fourth coming here. And they've got a lane violation on Snyder. And a full timeout called by Coach Inge. Down by five, 19.8 seconds remaining. SummitCitySports.com brought to you by Parkview Hospital. Tomorrow's action is jam-packed again. Six games once again with SummitCitySports.com bringing you all of that action. We'll start off with the 9 a.m. game. That will be the girls. Lures rank is uh, the third seed against the number six seed, Concordia. Followed by the 1045 game, which is the third. This is the boys tournament, the number third seeded Northside playing the number six seeded Concordia. Followed by the 1230 game with the number one seeded Homestead Lady Spartans taking on the Northrop Lady Bruins. They are the ninth seed. Back to the boys side for the 4 p.m. game with the number one seed Carroll taking on the number eight South Side Archers. That will be followed by back to the girls for the 545 game, which is the number two seeded Carroll against the number seven seeded Southside. Then to cap off the night, we'll head back to the boys arena. We'll have the fourth, excuse me, where we'll have the number two seeded Snyder play the number seven seeded Northrop. Goinger does get it in bounds to Ross. Ross, they're down by five, 17 seconds. They gotta get a quick bucket. Good pump fake and just can't get it to go. Rebound by Covington and that might do it. Eight seconds, Hurst puts it up, can't get it to go. That's blocked by Ross, but she'll get called for that push in the back. Two foul shots coming. That's five on Ross, he's had a great game. He's had a couple tough calls. Heather Nellum checks in, the junior for Dwanger. 4.2 seconds remaining. Snyder with a five point advantage and Shamble to the line to shoot two. That's the first. Six point advantage now. Shamble up and that one's good as well. Hits both of them. Seven point advantage and Dwanger throws it out of bounds. That will all but seal it. That ball will go back to Snyder up by seven with three seconds. They inbound to Shamble and that is it. Big comeback by the Class 4A Snyder Panthers come back down from 10 points to beat the 3A Bishop Dwenger Saints. They move on and will play the winner of the 12:30 game tomorrow. They will play Wednesday at 3 p.m. against Homestead. The winner of Homestead and Northrop. For Carrington Thompson, I'm Tim Atkinson. SummitCitySports.com brought to you by Parkview Hospital. Thank you for joining us. We'll join you here for the last game of the night.